Instagram.com. Hi guys, today we're going to talk about gastroesophageal reflux disease, otherwise known as heartburn, otherwise known as GERD, and some pretty interesting complications that I've seen recently. Look, there's a lot of thoughts about gastroesophageal reflux disease. I'm going to tell you the facts, and most of these facts a lot of people, even physicians, are unaware of. I'm Dr. Roger Schwelt, pulmonary critical care and sleep specialist. We're going to talk today about gastroesophageal reflux disease and some really interesting things that I think many people don't know, many patients don't know, many physicians are unaware of when it comes to this disease. A lot of times we think we'll just take an antacid or proton pump inhibitor or an H2 blocker and that'll solve the issue. There are things that we need to know about this and we're going to jump into it right now. What we're looking at here is the stomach, and you can see the part of the body that we're referring to right here. The stomach comes from the esophagus. The esophagus is this tube that goes from the mouth down to this top part here, which is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is this area right here that is the major muscle of breathing, and it sits right under the lungs, as you can see. The lungs would sit just like this. So when this muscle contracts and comes down, it allows air to come into the lungs. Of course, I couldn't get away with just talking about the lungs. Let's talk about the stomach as well. The esophagus comes down and actually perforates and goes right through the middle of this diaphragm muscle. That is known as the hiatus. A hiatus is a break, and that's exactly what we see in this diaphragm is a break where these things can pass through. So not only does the esophagus pass through there, but also the aorta as it goes down towards the feet. Right here at this junction between the upper portion of the body where the lungs are and the lower portion of the body where the abdomen and all of the bowels are is this division where the hiatus is and the esophagus then turns into the stomach. There's something called the lower esophageal sphincter, which is actually part of the esophagus. And then there's this esophageal hiatus, which is right here. Now, both of those are going to work together to keep things in the stomach and prevent them from going up the esophagus. Now, that works most of the time, but you can get stuff that refluxes up, and we'll talk more about that later. Some people have what they call a hiatal hernia. Already you can start to understand why they call it that is because there's a hernia that goes through this hiatus or this opening in the diaphragm and it goes up. As the esophagus gets pulled up, or another way of saying it is that if there's abdominal pressure down below because of obesity, etc., it can push the stomach up through that hiatus. Notice that the lower esophageal sphincter is now no longer at the diaphragm. It's up here and the hiatus is still down here. So when these two things are in different places, you have half a valve in both places really that aren't working well together. What can happen is reflux is able to happen much more commonly. If there are contents in the stomach and the person lies down, it's much more likely to go up here than it would be in this situation. And you can well imagine that this is a strong acid from stomach acid that is going up into an esophagus that's not used to having that that's going to cause significant heartburn. Then if it goes all the way up to the upper esophageal sphincter, which is way up here by the mouth, it's up in this area right here, what's going to happen is that the contents of that reflux is going to come up and go into the mouth. It's going to cause irritation. It's going to cause erythema or inflammation of the vocal cords. It can cause hoarseness. It could even get into the mouth and cause erosion of the enamel of the teeth. And more importantly here, it can go down into the lungs. It can go down the trachea and then go into the lungs themselves. I had a couple of patients in my clinic, at least three, with lung ailments and chronic cough. And as part of the workup, I asked them about reflux and heartburn. Their reflux was so severe. They had all been on medications to reduce the symptoms of reflux, but many of them endorsed symptoms of regurgitation at night as they were laying down. And so you know if they're waking up with that, then there is stuff actually coming up into the mouth and going down into the lungs. And that can cause chronic cough issues and actually fibrosis of the lung, and it can cause inflammation and even pneumonia. Here's a CAT scan of one such person that I had in my clinic, and you can see here this is the thing that they're laying on. The feet are coming out at us, and we're slicing halfway down the chest. This thing here is the heart. And these are the airways that have already split off. You can see here, and these black things are the lungs. And they are black, of course, because air is black, as you can see right here. 
so they should be black. So the absolute abnormalities here are the white hazy things. And you can see that there's some white hazy areas, something we would call tree in bud inflammation, and also here on this side. I want you to notice something about what we're seeing here. Notice that if one were laying in the supine position or laying on their back, that if stuff were to go down the lung, typically we would see it go down to the right side. And this patient may have been laying on their left side. That's why we see it more over here on this side. But notice, is it going to go to the top part of the lungs or is it going to go to the bottom portion of the lungs? And clearly here, we're seeing it go to the bottom portion of the lungs and not the top. And that is very indicative that this patient is silently aspirating. I'm going to go ahead and remove those red writings so you can see it better. So again, if you take a general look at that, you can see that there is definitely issues in the lower portions of the lungs, and it's on both sides. People with hiatal hernias are going to have a much worse time with this. Let's talk about the treatment. A lot of times, physicians will just write for a proton pump inhibitor, and some common names would be like pantoprazole or omeprazole. There's a whole bunch of other ones, and they may even do H2 blockers like ranitidine, which is pepsid, and so forth. But the thing here I want to stress, and many people don't understand this, is that the proton pump inhibitors and the H2 blockers, all that they do is reduce the acidity of the stomach acid so that when the stuff does reflux, it doesn't burn as much as it would if there was acid in it. But here's the key. This does not reduce reflux. It simply reduces the acidity of the reflux. And that's important to understand because the actual reflux of that fluid, as it goes up, especially when people are sleeping, it's still coming up and it's still causing havoc and it's still causing hoarseness, even though it might not be as acidic. So what do I do? I definitely do put people on PPI and H2 blockers. But another thing that I think is very important is to elevate the head of the bed, either on a couple of bricks, which would be about eight inches, or going to a medical supply store and getting a wedge. And of course, the reason is obvious. You want to elevate the head so that gravity is keeping that fluid in the stomach. When you go to sleep, peristalsis significantly slows down, and the lower esophageal sphincter is compromised. Stuff that refluxes up into the esophagus is not going to come down as quickly as it would during the day, number one, because you're upright generally, and number two, because your peristalsis is much, much better. The upper esophageal sphincter, as we talked about, also becomes very weak during sleep, in addition to the fact that peristalsis is weak. So this is really an important thing, is to elevate the bed. I'm not saying here that you should just get like a sleep number bed and elevate the head of the bed, but keep the lower portion of the body flat. Because when you do that, you are actually bending the body there and putting more pressure on the abdomen, and that can actually cause more reflux. So really, you want the bed to be flat, but elevated. That's a really important concept there. The other thing that's really important is no food three hours before laying down. This is really important. So three hours before laying down, no food. I had a patient once that had issues with sleeping at night and coughing and shortness of breath, and I instituted this just one thing, this three hours before laying down. Their sleep dramatically improved. They felt much better in the morning. Their cough went away. Their shortness of breath went away. The combination of elevation of the head of the bed and not eating anything three hours before laying down is really important. And then you want to avoid things. So the last thing is avoiding. So what are we avoiding? We're avoiding things that weaken this lower esophageal sphincter. So what are those things? Tobacco, alcohol, spicy foods. You know what it is. For some people, it's tomato sauce. Could be peppermint. There's a lot of things that are going to open that esophageal sphincter and allow stuff to go up. So you want to avoid these things that are actually going to do that. If these conservative measures don't work, there are actually surgical procedures that can be done to fix things like hiatal hernias. The other thing that you have to be concerned about is if this reflux has been going on for years, decades, there is a condition called Barrett's esophagus, which can occur where the surface of the esophagus changes from a squamous cell to an intestinal cell metaplasia, and that is potentially precancerous. And the way to find that out is to have a EGD, which stands for esophago-gastroduodenoscopy, and that's simply a scope that goes down and looks into the esophagus to see what type of mucosa is there, how it looks, if there's any suspicious lesions, and perhaps get a biopsy.
So I wanna be clear, gastroesophageal reflux disease is gonna happen whether or not you're on a medication for it because it only reduces the acid, it doesn't reduce the actual reflux. And when that reflux happens, it's gonna go up into your throat, it can cause hoarseness, it can cause a chronic cough, it can cause erosion of the, the enamel on your teeth, and even worse, it can go down into your lungs and cause uh, pneumonia, fibrosis, uh, infections, all sorts of mischief. I have seen many symptoms get better after treating the gastroesophageal reflux disease with the regimen that I've just shown you, including asthma. I've had some patients with asthma. They no longer needed medication because their asthma was completely predicated on their untreated gastroesophageal reflux disease. So if you found this lecture helpful, please leave us a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and join us at medcram.com where we have continuing medical education and continuing education units in topics like pneumonia, antibiotics, EKG, basic metabolic panel, and the CBC. Thanks for joining us.